Hey everybody, welcome to another of my 40k 6th edition Tyranid videos. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Wee! Late night again. Um, today we're talking about Ravners. Ravners, Ravners, Ravners. Uh, seldom seen. I like them because they move through anything. They're beasts. Fleet beasts move through covers. The big thing now is uh, assault over defense lines without any dangerous terrain checks. Basically, they make almost no dangerous terrain checks. It's almost like uh, some form of in improved bike. Bikes fly through things and everything like that, but they always got to make the danger. These guys, I'm not, I'm not aware of really any situation where they are forced to make a dangerous terrain check when for cover or for terrain. Too often, they're nice. They're nice. They have, they have, they deep strike, which is the theme. Happen in, in, infiltration, deep strike is the theme of my of my current army. So that makes them the obvious choice for me in fast attack. And no, that doesn't mean my whole army deep strikes. Yeah, I don't. People like to take my videos and push them to the insane, insane extreme. So if I say I have a deep striking army, they translate that as, really? You put all your troops in reserve and try to deep strike because I'm a moron? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that they all have the ability to deep strike. And then I decide based upon the circumstances of the battle... Which units deep strike and which units are placed on the table and which units infiltrate and which units outflank. It could be determined by the scenario. It's determined by am I going first or second. It's determined by who I'm fighting and a, a hundred other different variables. Yes, now I'm finding I have to make my videos idiot proof. But, and explain things like that, but whatever. Uh, another good thing is... Let me see. They they come with with dual scything talons. I don't use that. I always give them rending claws because I find that far more useful than than another simply another attack. Um. Yeah, they they, they when I land either now with the in sixth edition they I tend to use their their maneuverability to get them into cover. After I land, uh, to to survive that that first turn, if not if they're unsupported, um, also because they come with death spitters, one of my favorite weapons for for the nids. You know, strength five, AP five, assault three. Wonderful weapon. There, it's almost an assault heavy bolter. From the way I see it, uh, it's just a wonderful weapon, and you can take, you know, when you when you take five Ravners, enough, or, well, I usually take four, four, eight, twelve, strength five shots, deep striking, and you know, within the range of the lictors, and da, 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 you just place them where they want, and it's 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 a sweet. It's a sweet deal. The other fun thing that we, uh, an argument that I usually get in with the. Um, with the Ravners is that since their deep strike ability is described at tunneling, uh, it, it leads to an interesting question of when they come at buildings, do they come in on the top or do they come in on the bottom? Because obviously it's tunneling and it would be pretty silly to put them on the top and have them move down. Now, specifically with the terror from below and the Molochs, they say if you deep strike in the building, you hit the creatures or anybody who's in the first floor. You don't land on the top and bring him down. Uh, so I'm inclined to believe that any rational human being would say, yes, if you have tunnels, you come up from the bottom. But who says 40K players are rational? <clears throat> um, who else? Oh, the, the Red Terror. He's a fun guy. If if you got the points and you're anticipating a lot of assaults, he's a fun guy. Uh, he really, really is. His uh, swallow hole ability is 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 fun. I, I'm I'm not going to go too much in in my experiences with it, but it's fun because it's it's 
it circumvents inter eternal warrior and insta kills because it's not technically an insta kill it's kind of a special case insta kill basically it says if he hits if he hits four times in a single phase with his normal attacks he gets to nominate a unit up that's that that's up to bulky and just gone we don't care about toughness we don't care about eternal warrior it, blah just eaten um a lot of, <laughs> oh it does get obviously an invulnerable save if it has one for all the morons out there who are going to say oh it's going to get an invulnerable save yes um but it's it's really it's really kind of fun it's 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 fun uh, I don't get them as much because I prefer to get another one with a death spitter. Um, and I usually use my lictors for for champion hunting. But it's definitely an ability. It's definitely one a luxury I would put into my army if I if I, if I have the points. Because um, why not? Why not? He also gets one more attack. Uh, I use Rending Claws with him all the time instead of the two Scything Talons because I'd much rather Rending over the extra attack now with Scything Talons. Whew, they're, they're fun. I really – I like them. And they – like I said before, they get anywhere. So – for my motif, which is the deep striking army, and that doesn't mean they all deep strike at the same time, you freaking smegheads. It just means I want an army focused around deep striking. Thank you. These guys are good. Also, most people haven't seen them. I, I rarely see Ravners running across a table. Uh, I see far more jet bikes and normal bikes and speeders and things like that. But Ravners, and as I've said in another video, uh, fast attack is one of the least used tools in the Tyranid Codex. And that's sad uh, because you, you need to have the ability to adapt to anything. And terrain is definitely... You know, like suddenly there's big lakes on the table or something like that. Swamps. Maybe you're on a swamp map. You show up at a tournament with all their pre-made tables. They always have some type of goofy thing set out there for terrain, at least at all the tournaments that I've ever been to with the pre-made terrain. There's something goofy there on their maps. They're sadistic that way. And I say, Haha, you know what? I keep a unit of Ravners just for that map table because they don't care they just don't care about terrain um now that's my that's my suggestions on rafters uh it was a little long-winded i know because well quite honestly they're a pretty simple unit oh the only gripe that i have about rafters and this is one of my few gripes with the tyranid codex is i don't know why they don't get biomorphs I mean, at, at least a prehensile tail. I mean, the guy is one giant freaking snake, and he doesn't have a prehensile tail. Why? Carnifexes have freaking prehensile tax, but a Ravner doesn't. You've been smoking something, GW, when you were doing that one. Down at Bugman's again. Wow. Uh, and 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 they they're also one of the only assault units in in the game that can't get toxin sacks and and adrenal glands and all types of fun things like that. It's just I don't know why. I mean, or acid blood. One of my favorites. You'd figure these guys would get would get an acid blood upgrade. It just why wouldn't they? I don't know. Um, I mean, the Shrikes get it. They're the exact same point cost. They're essentially the same, play the same role, except for that they're Tyranid Warriors. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, you can't you can't have everything. Maybe 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 in the next uh, data slate we're gonna get special Ravners with acid blood and and fun stuff. I hope so. Fingers crossed. Fingers, 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 fingers intertwined in the cross to to see if they get some cool Ravner broods. Okay. I hope you enjoy that. Um, blah. See you next time. Bye.